In planet Earth's long history, there have been many iconic figures that have made a huge impact on their surroundings and the people around them. During the 21st century, a catastrophic event occurred, leaving planet Earth in a dark age for the whole of humanity. With an evil force looming over the human race, new, iconic figures were forged where they stepped up with the aim to save their race using everything in their power. During a tough situation like the Black Mesa incident, those within would learn what they were truly capable of. Some simply accepted their defeat and became prey to both the Xenian lifeforms and human units that had been sent in to clean up the disaster, while others took charge of the situation and fought their way through, attempting to save as many people as possible along the way. Through the following years of hardship after the Combine invasion, one of the few survivors of Black Mesa had discovered just how resilient he was and would use his natural ability to fight and survive to guide those around him to aid the whole of humanity against the alien force. Who was this regular man that was forced to adapt to survive what should have been a regular work shift at a top secret research facility? What is his story and what impact did he have before and during the uprising of humanity. Here we explore in the lore behind Barney Calhoun. Way before the world was invaded by the dominating alien empire of the Combine and planet Earth still had its freedom, a young Barney Calhoun had been studying at the Martinson College for two years. During this time, Barney still had not decided on which major he wanted to take. After these two years, he seemingly had struggled to decide on what he wanted to continue with, and so, he searched for a new job. On his search, he discovered a position as a security officer in the New Mexico desert for a top secret facility. He left everything behind and moved to the New Mexico desert and began his new role as a security officer at the Black Mesa Research Facility. A place that would not only change his life, but also the lives of everyone on the planet in the future. Having given up everything to move here, and with the secrecy required for such a position, Barney was given accommodation within the Area 8 topside dormitories, just like every other security officer at the research facility. To navigate Black Mesa, the security officers were required to ride the Black Mesa transit system to the various sectors that spanned miles over the desert. As a security officer at such a potentially dangerous location, he and those he worked with were subjected to training sessions at the Black Mesa training facility. Here, they were trained on the various weapons available at the facility to defend those within, how to operate some of the larger machinery and how to wear an armored vest and helmet to protect them from the dangers that came with working with the potentially dangerous experiments the scientists were working on. Alongside his training, Barney had met someone at the facility, Lauren, to his co-workers. This connection appeared to be extremely secretive as no one knew the extent of their relationship. The only thing known is that he planned to buy her flowers in the upcoming days. Through his training, Barney learned that his main tasks would be to guard assigned sections across the facility, assist the scientists if they were to ask him, and finally, to perform general maintenance across the facility to allow the continued functioning for the scientists to perform their experiments without interruption. As a security officer with a level 3 clearance of the facility, Barney was given a disaster response list in which he had to follow in the event that a disaster did occur within the Black Mesa research facility. His first priority would be to preserve the facility, its equipment and materials within. His second priority would be to watch over the welfare of the research personnel. And finally, his last priority in such a disastrous situation was his own personal safety. Agreeing to these terms, he continued to work at the facility. With a daily structure, a significant other, and a place to live on site, Barney also became close to some of the other research scientists he was paid to watch over, two known being Dr. Gordon Freeman and Dr. Isaac Kleiner. With the top secret research facility being in fairly capable hands with security officers scattered all over, 
Barney would become closer to Gordon after he and the scientist would race each other through the vents of the facility to unlock the lab of Dr. Isaac Kleiner as he would regularly lock himself out of it. With a friendship flourishing, it is even said that at one point, Barney promised to buy Gordon a beer, but with the events soon to come, it would be a long time before Barney could fulfill that promise. With the facility running smoothly, Barney had a clear understanding of what his priorities were as a security officer at Black Mesa. On May the 9th, in an unknown year in the early 2000s, Barney was sent a letter from the office of the Black Mesa Administrator, Dr. Wallace Breen, where he was told he would be reassigned from his current shift pattern to the blue shift from May 15th up until August 15th. While it is unknown why he was moved from his current shift, it is known that there were unknown forces behind the scenes attempting to craft the perfect scenario in order to acquire a location just out of reach. After receiving this letter, on May 9th, Barney was offered a salary increase as well as security guard training for the following two days in preparation for the blue shift. With his training complete and the blue shift having him working within the Sector C section of Black Mesa, the next few days would not only test Barney's natural ability to survive in a challenging situation, but it would also change him and teach him just how capable he was. Stepping onto a tram from his residence at the Topside 8 dormitories within Area 9, Barney sets off to begin his second day on Blue Shift to fulfill his roles as a security officer. As he steps onto the tram at 8.42am, he would not be able to comprehend the trouble that the day would bring. As he travelled through the transit system, over in the Sector C test labs, the anomalous materials team was setting up an experiment to test a very important crystal sample taken from an alien border world called Zen. The scientists had been using a giant anti-mass spectrometer to study these intricate materials and learn more about the border world. The difference this time being that the administrator had sent the team a sample that he had told them that it was very important to get the best results possible. With this, the anomalous materials team were put under pressure to perform, and so, they adjusted the regular parameters that they would normally use for a study of a Zenian crystal and planned to push the machinery's power up to 105% instead of 100. With these changes to the machinery, the systems across the whole of the Black Mesa research facility began to malfunction. Outside of Sector C, some of the personnel became frustrated with their experiments as it was affecting their systems too. Arriving just outside of the Area 3 security facilities, a security officer struggles to get Barney inside of the security headquarters due to the system crashes and security malfunctions across the facility as a side effect of the scientists working in Sector C. Eventually getting inside, Barney picks up his vest and gun, now ready for his shift. After being asked to travel to Sector G Hydroelectric to help some of the scientists having issues with an elevator, Barney sets off. With the facility being extremely large, the personnel of the facility would typically use the Black Mesa Transit system to travel around, but with the power issues inside of the facility, the tram system had also begun to malfunction. With this, he sets off on foot. At around 9am, Barney arrives at the elevator in Sector G and fixes the machinery, allowing it to function. With this, he begins the descent towards the deeper areas of the sector in the elevator. But, due to the continued issues across the facility, the elevator stops multiple times. Across the facility in Sector C, the anomalous materials team had begun their experiment using the anti-mass spectrometer to study the unstable Xenian crystal sample. As Barney's friend, Gordon Freeman, moves the crystal into the beam of the large machine, the crystal shatters, flooding the room with exotic matter, triggering a resonance cascade. With a tear in space bridging planet Earth to the border world of Zen, waves of portals appear throughout the facility, bringing in hostile Zenian lifeforms into Black Mesa. Still stuck within the malfunctioning elevator, unaware of what had just happened, Barney and the two other scientists within watch in horror as Vortigaunts and Hound Eyes teleport into the facility, attacking the personnel below. 
During this chaos, a security officer attempts to shoot at the oncoming Xenian lifeforms but is struck by an out-of-control tram. As it flies off the rails, it kills the officer and its operator. As the debris and barrels fly through the area, one of them unfortunately hits the wires holding up Barney's elevator, plunging it into the ground. With luck, Barney survives the fall, and after waking up after being knocked unconscious by the fall, he discovers the two scientists dead and observes the aftermath of the Xenian lifeforms that had come into the facility. Fighting through hound eyes, Barney discovers a scientist hiding away. Realizing that some time had passed during his unconscious state, the scientist claims that people had been sent into the facility to kill him and asks Barney not to tell anybody he was hiding. With this in mind, Barney could prepare himself for not only alien hostiles, but also potential human ones too. Having worked his way through the underground of Sector G, Calhoun comes into contact with the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit, a team deployed into Black Mesa to cover up the incident by killing any witnesses. With his natural ability to survive, Barney kills those that come across his path at this point, hoping only to survive. Passing many murdered security guards across the facility who he had once worked with, Barney discovers an extremely injured scientist locked within an office with two HECU members attempting to gain entry. After killing the grunts, the scientist confirms to Barney that the military had been sent into the facility to question and kill the scientists. With the units scattered across the facility killing any they could find, the scientist and a friend, Dr. Rosenberg, had come up with a plan to leave the facility using an old teleporter in the old prototype labs of the facility. But, on their way there, they had been attacked by the grunts. While this scientist was aware that his wounds would mean he would not be able to follow through with the plan, he believed Barney could. All Barney needed to do was avoid the military and find Dr. Rosenberg. With a new sense of hope, Barney leaves the office to find Dr. Rosenberg, and maybe a way out of this nightmare. Entering the freight yard, Barney discovers scientists hiding within the containers away from the HECU soldiers. With every scientist found, they asked Barney for his help in survival. Finally, Barney finds Dr. Rosenberg locked away within a freight container, and together, they plan to use the old teleporter to teleport themselves out of the facility. In Rosenberg's research, he had actually designed the anti-mass spectrometer that had had a huge part in this whole disaster. Using Rosenberg's high security clearance, Barney acts as his bodyguard as they make their way through the older parts of the facility that only few knew existed. Using a hidden elevator behind a covered wall, Calhoun and Rosenberg enter the abandoned section of the facility where like-minded scientists had also come to use the teleporter. Now with an escape in sight, Rosenberg explains that using a teleporter does not take the person from point A to point B. A relay device is also required. But, with the events that had occurred on both Earth and Zen, the relay device on Zen would need to be reactivated to allow the scientists and Barney to escape. With this, Barney is sent to Zen to reactivate the relay device. Through a successful trip, Barney survives the hostile flora and fauna of Zen and reaches the relay device, activating it. With his mission successful, Barney returns to Earth and is then informed that all he now needs to do is recharge a power cell so that the scientists would have enough power and time to teleport out safely. Although the chaos of this incident had put everyone in danger, Barney had still followed the danger protocol set in place. He had maintained the equipment and protected the scientists, putting his own life at risk in the process. With the charging done, Rosenberg has everything in place to get himself, Barney, Simmons and Walter to safety. Working with the old equipment and fighting off Xenian forces teleporting into this area of the facility, Barney defends the scientists as they leave the facility one by one, until finally he is the last one remaining. After a nightmare of a shift at the Black Mesa research facility, Barney truly had done his job to the best of his ability, and now he could sign off. Jumping into the portal as the HECU discovered this area of the facility, 
Barney falls through and lands in a car park surrounded by Rosenberg, Simmons and Walter, but due to a side effect of the teleportation, Barney becomes stuck in a resonance displacement loop where he is pulled to Zen and different locations of the Black Mesa facility until finally he fully stabilizes back in the car park with the scientists. Now free from this nightmare, the security officer and the scientists drive away from the facility surviving its oncoming destruction at the hands of the G-Man and his employers in the following hours. During the beginning of Barney's shift, he had noticed the mysterious government man travelling through the facility using the Black Mesa transit system, but the G-Man had paid no attention to the simple security officer. He simply was of no use to this sinister interdimensional bureaucrat. Although Barney and the scientists had survived the Black Mesa incident, something worse was on the way. Due to the connection between Earth and Zen, the Combine, a multi-dimensional alien empire, had become aware of Earth's presence, and with their goal to conquer all sentient life in the multiverse, they struck Earth hard as it dealt with the violent portal storms that had ravaged the planet as an aftermath of the Resonance Cascade. In a mere seven-hour war, humanity fell and submitted to their new leaders. With this, humanity were rounded up and sent to various settlements across the planet while the Combine adjusted the planet to take its resources. While many of the human population accepted their fate, there were some that had sunk into the shadows where they came across other people with similar ideas of revolution. But with the strength of the Combine forces, and now with the Combine bringing humans into their ranks with the promise of better food rations and living accommodation, the majority of humanity felt lost with no one to trust. Having survived the Black Mesa incident, Barney had somehow lost contact with Dr. Rosenberg shortly after and came across Dr. Isaac Kleiner in City 17, a major combine settlement. Having known Isaac during his days at Black Mesa and with generally being trusted by those that knew him, Isaac informed Barney that he had become a part of a resistance network with main bases scattered across the wasteland of Earth, hidden away from the Combine. With another leader, Dr. Eli Vance hiding away in Black Mesa East in the canals of City 17, Barney decided to stay with Isaac and help him in any way possible. With this, Barney joined the civil protection as a way to gain insight on their raids, interrogations and even to provide false information that would lead the Combine away from the areas the Resistance were working in. With this gained information, Isaac would pass it on to the other bases of the Resistance, and so allowing them to avoid the Combine raids and the awful fate that came with being discovered as a Resistance member. Through his survival of the Black Mesa incident, Barney had formed a natural hatred for the headcrab species, and with Isaac having a pet headcrab, Lamar, he consistently came to blows with it. As the years passed, Dr. Eli Vance and Isaac Kleiner developed teleporters using the relay device on Zen to travel between the bases. The only issue they had was that they could not get it to work properly. Through various experiments, Barney assisted Isaac. One memorable experiment for Barney being when they had attempted to use a cat in the teleportation process. Although the details of this attempt are kept secret, the images and sounds of the cat meowing would haunt Barney's dreams for years. With the resistance growing stronger every day with new bases set up across the wasteland, Barney gathering intelligence and acting as Isaac's bodyguard and with him being generally skilled in combat and leadership, all Barney and the resistance needed was a spark to begin the fight against the Combine. Approximately 20 years after the Resonance Cascade, on a regular shift undercover as a civil protection officer, Barney is assigned to the City 17 train station. As usual, watching the monitors, Barney is surprised to see his old friend Gordon Freeman attempting to pass the gate to Nova Prospect. As the security checkpoint did not recognize him, Gordon is stopped by the gate. With a general situation like this, the normal procedure would be for the civil protection to interrogate him. Surprised at how seemingly orchestrated this situation was, Barney left his office and brought Gordon in, away from the prying eyes of the other Combine soldiers. Now in the clear, Barney takes off his mask and instantly references the beer he owed Gordon in a way to refresh his memory of who he was. 
Seemingly successful, Barney instigates a video call with Isaac, and here, the Resistance could begin to make their move. The leaders of the Resistance had mostly been a part of the Black Mesa incident, and all knew of Gordon's work. Furthermore, Gordon had been a resistance icon due to his actions during the incident where he had not only saved as many of the scientists as possible, but he had also disappeared while travelling to Zen in an attempt to close the bridge between Earth and the border world. Fully aware of how significant Gordon's return would be to the resistance, Isaac and Barney deemed it worthwhile to get Gordon to Isaac's lab as soon as possible without the detection of the Combine. Aware that having his door locked for a long period of time during questioning would appear as suspicious to the other members of the civil protection, Barney warns Gordon to stay away from security checkpoints as they would catch him just like he had and sends him out through a window into City 17. With Gordon on his path, Barney leaves the train station looking forward to what would come next. Arriving at Kleiner's lab, Barney discovers Gordon had got there first, with Black Mesa East being a safer location for Gordon away from the random raids of the civil protection in the city, Eli and Isaac decide to use the teleporter to send Alex and Gordon there. Still having nightmares about the failed experiment with the cat, Barney becomes resistant about using the teleporter on his friends. First, the group successfully send Alex through to great success, but when attempting to send Gordon, Lamar jumps at the teleporter, resulting in it malfunctioning. As Gordon disappears in front of him, Barney watches as Gordon seemingly goes through a resonance displacement loop, just like he had on his teleport out of Black Mesa. During Gordon's loop, he appears within the office of Wallace Breen for a few moments, just enough to get a real look at him. Aware of what Gordon had done during the Black Mesa incident and what he represented to the Resistance, Wallace instantly informs his Combine advisors of a threat that could potentially destroy everything they had built over the last two decades. Finally leaving his loop, Gordon lands outside of Isaac's lab window to safety. While he had not teleported to Black Mesa East, he had survived the teleportation error and could make his way there using the Underground Railroad. Aware that Gordon did not have a weapon to defend himself, Barney makes his way outside in the hopes Gordon would pass him. To his luck, Gordon did, and he throws down Gordon's well-known crowbar. Looking out into the distance, Barney is stunned by how high alert the Combine had gone simply from just a sighting of Gordon. With the Combine sending out as many forces as they could, Barney knew that change was coming and he was on the right side of it. With having sent Gordon in the right direction to find the Underground Railroad, Barney steps back inside to watch over Isaac. Over the following days, Barney hears word of the troubles Gordon is causing for the Combine all over the wasteland, and he knew that the time to strike would come soon. Shortly after a brutal assault on Black Mesa East and the capture of Dr. Eli Vance, the Resistance heard word of an explosion on the coast. This explosion had come from the destruction of Nova Prospect a major combine location that they had used to hold their prisoners. As this location being destroyed would have been a major blow for the combine, the resistance saw this as the perfect opportunity to finally band together and take back control of their planet. Skilled in combat and with many soldiers dedicated to the cause, Barney took up the position as a field commander to work through the streets of City 17 and fight against everything that came their way. While Gordon and Alex had been within Nova Prospect during its destruction, they had simply not come out. With some members presuming the worst, the soldiers fought on with the symbol of the resistance in their minds. Although successful, after a week of fighting, Barney had found himself seeking reinforcements in order to continue the good work he and his team were doing after being pinned down in a single location after Combine snipers had managed to acquire strong positions to halt the charge of the resistance force. To his luck, Gordon and Alex had arrived in Isaac's lab after being stuck in a slow time warp after using a teleporter from their now destroyed Nova Prospect. As Barney radioed for backup, Gordon took it upon himself to go and help the resistance and charge to the citadel. As Gordon arrived in the area, he used grenades to take out the snipers, allowing Barney to continue to lead the charge. 
Together, they reach the Overwatch Nexus and disable the suppression device firing out deadly beams at the Resistance members attempting to get closer to the Citadel. Having led an assault on the Overwatch Nexus and once again taking over another one of the Combine's main buildings, the Resistance were in high spirits. Marching through, Dog discovers a path to the Citadel and seeing an opportunity to enter the structure and save Eli, Gordon and Barney decide to part ways. With Barney still having a mission for the rest of City 17, he says goodbye to his friend as Gordon drops down into the tunnel below. As he looks down into the tunnel, watching Gordon move on, he asks Gordon to pass on a message of ill will onto Wallace Breen, a man he actively despised, not only believing him to have been partially responsible for the Black Mesa incident, but also for selling out his own species in return for a better life and control. With his team in control and able to easily navigate the city now that many of the Combine forces were either dead or had abandoned the city, Barney and the Resistance fought. That was until they looked up at the Citadel as the sky turned red. Above everything else, Barney had wanted to save the suffering civilians of planet Earth from the brutal force of the dominating Combine Empire. Now aware that City 17 had a limited amount of time before the Citadel would explode, Barney changes his mission from taking over City 17 to getting as many of the residents out of the city alive. With this, he and his team work tirelessly to access locations across the city to allow them to evacuate as many civilians as possible. Over the next few days, and becoming more tired the more they worked, Barney and his team are finally greeted by Gordon and Alex Vance who help the Resistance escort the remaining citizens through Combine-controlled regions into the tactical train station. After successfully fighting off the Combine forces and loading up the final civilians onto the trains of the train station, Barney deems his mission successful, and with this, he boards a train out of City 17, ready to say goodbye to Gordon and Alex. As the train begins to depart, Barney yells out that he will see Gordon when he sees him, and moves on to an unknown destination. Barney's life changed drastically after leaving the Martinson College to become a security officer at the top secret Black Mesa research facility. From what should have been a simple job, his experience had pushed him into the direction of becoming one of the leaders of a resistance against a dominating alien empire. Through his whole journey, he had only wanted to help and save those around him, truly a hero of humanity. From the last moments of him moving away on the train out of City 17, it is unknown what fate eventually came to Barney or whether we will see him again. Regardless, wherever he landed, Barney will still be attempting to help those around him and maybe even one day, he will finally get Gordon that beer he owes him. I ask Resistance member, was Barney Calhoun yet another person manipulated by the G-Man and his employers? Or did he forge his own path and inadvertently make their plans more difficult? Barney Calhoun is one of the most iconic characters in the Half-Life universe. While his ability to lead against the Combine would be cause enough for him to be a favourite, his one-liners are also extremely iconic. The best one being, about that beer I owe you. Similar to the Adrian Shepard video, I have seen the community question the canonicity of both Blue Shift and Opposing Force, as they were both developed by Gearbox Software. As Barney appears in the later installations developed by Valve, it seems that Blue Shift is more accepted into the Half-Life canon more than the other side games. Again, I'll revert to the quote by Valve writer Mark Laidlaw, where he states that Valve do not get involved in issues of canonicity, and that there is no official stance, the games are as they are. In short, the player can decide what they deem to be canon or not. With this in mind, both are canon in my mind. Shepard is mentioned in passing during Blue Shift, and so if Blue Shift is more considered canon, then so is Opposing Force if it is referenced within the game. In my mind, both of the games are canon. Also, although I did not mention Otis in this video, I did enjoy the brief interactions we had with him. It's a shame his role in the game was not bigger. Now. Some of my earlier viewers will notice that this is actually my second Barney video. After creating a poll on whether I should recreate some of my older videos, you guys seem to really want it. I thought that since I have grown a lot since then, I would recreate it entirely. 
the original video, if I remember correctly, was about 5 minutes long. Now with this full 20 minute plus script in front of me, I have no idea how I was able to make Barney's journey so short. It's growth I guess. I will link the original in the description if you are interested in seeing how I have changed over the past year. That was the lore behind the legendary Barney Calhoun. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. If you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe. It helps a lot. I know you have already watched a couple of videos by now, so why not subscribe and get notified when I post? Interacting in any way will help the video with the algorithm. And I promise, I'll owe you a beer if we ever meet in person. If you would like to stay up to date with what I get up to outside of YouTube, then go and follow my Twitter and Instagram. I also stream on both YouTube and Twitch most Thursdays where we are currently playing through Fallout New Vegas and some scary games. It's a fun time. The link is in the description if you are interested. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons who are helping to support the channel. I really appreciate you. Thanks to the old gods. Detroit, Avi WV, Brunette Janas, Jojo Scotia, Rachel Archibald and Imaginary Holly. And an extra special thank you to the Elder Ones tier, Scrushroom. Jonas, Lewis, and Queen Arby. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. What did you guys think of this lore video? Barney's journey within Black Mesa was fantastic, as it added a completely new perspective to the catastrophic event. We saw the swarm of the aliens entering the facility as the event happened. It's brilliant. Did you guys play Blue Shift? If so, did you like it? Whose story do you prefer? Adrian Shepard or Barney Calhoun? And finally, do you consider Blue Shift to be canon? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for future Half-Life lore videos, please let me know. I do have a long list to get through. The next few I am thinking are The Hunter Chopper, Gordon Freeman, The Quarantine Zone, and Black Mesa. Again, any suggestions are welcome. I did grab these last few from your comments. That was everything I wanted to cover in this episode. Now Resistance member, enjoy your day. Bye.